appreciate it. There we go. Uh, Douglas, thanks for uh, walking me through uh, the peer Postgres and database replication streaming. Um, so I've got we've got a couple of questions that we want to go through. So let's start with uh, the you know pick up where we left off here uh, on the on the Postgres replication. You mentioned that the Petroni runs on the Postgres uh, node itself, right? So they all they both run on. The, if you have multiple instances of Postgres, does what is the configuration at that point? Yeah, if you have more than one Postgres, uh, we need to have another a joint service. So you need to have another database node. Okay. So for example, we recommend at least three database nodes. So you have three Postgres instance running, mm -hmm. one on each node, and yep. three Petroni instance on each of those nodes. Well. Yes. And one console agent running on each one of these nodes as well. Gotcha. Okay. And and then PG Bouncer, you mentioned uh, if you have database load balancing, then it would need to run on every one of the database nodes as well. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, but but at any given time, there's only one database that's writable, right? Every the other two mm -hmm. databases are streaming. So um, the the writes always go to that that primary database when when they come. Yes. In. Mm -hmm. uh, inside a Patroni cluster, we have the concept of the leader and the replicas. Mm -hmm. We can have one leader at, at a time. Okay. Uh, you can have many replicas as you want. So, how they elect the, this leader is that every replica can become the leader. They try to write this key. For example, I am the leader. Douglas, I am the leader here. Yeah. I try to write this key that they use as a lock. In the console okay. database, yeah, because Proton store all the cluster information inside the console, so they, this information is shared between all the Proton services, so mm -hmm. they know which one is the leader, which one is the replica, which one who they need to follow. Um, so that, for example, if I got the lock, I am the leader. Uh, I will be the, the node that will be able to get rights. Okay, and all the other replicas, you can. If you want, you can redirect some quer read queries to the replicas using the PG Bouncer. Uh -huh. but, but you only have one leader at a time that it can receive right requests. Gotcha. And how and does then, the leader election happen? Uh, at what point? What triggers the leader uh, election? Probably, uh, if not wrong, that uh, I don't know how the internals of Petroni happen, but mm -hmm. basically, when you strap, start bootstrapping the first but on service it will become the the leader the leader okay yeah and if a failover happen i know that they check difference between the wall log size uh, mm -hmm. they to, to decide which you, which help will be promoted to the new leader gotcha Gotcha. Yeah, I know we're some, going into the deep yeah. into the database <laughs> yeah. themselves rather than the replication but um i think for me, it's a kind of interesting and useful to understand the, the initial setup as, as well. So yeah. thanks for that. Yeah, there are some internals that I don't recall off the top of my head, but yeah. So if I am the leader, I need to update the lock mm -hmm. every time. If I didn't update it for, I believe that's 30 seconds, the key will expire and another Hepka will become the leader. That's the how the failover works. Gotcha. And Petroni yeah, nodes are the ones that manage that. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. And this is the automatic failover. You can also perform a manual failover if you want. For example, I can say that, okay, I want the Hepka B to become the leader. And is that done through console? Is that? No, is that done? Then? No, we, we have some omnibus commands mm -hmm. to perform that because Petroni has a, a CLI that allows us to do this. Okay. And you, you wrote a, a wrapper on top of the CLI to just to save some, some configurations from the end user. Sure, sure. So in terms of the Petroni architecture, any Petroni node is pretty much the same. If we issue a command to a Petroni node, they're all they're all they look like the same, yeah. 
they're all the same. So you don't need to repeat the command on all three. You can issue it to one and then they'll go mm -hmm. Okay, yep. understood. Okay. So if you are, yeah, you can, if you are on node one and want to make the node tree the leader, you can issue the command from the node one. That's no problem. Because they have a REST API that they use to communicate between all the, all the, all the but all the Python service communicate to each other using this REST API. REST API. Oh, yeah. Okay, right. Oh, that's very cool. Um, so I guess uh, that's that's very clear. And thanks for that. Uh, then we have the PG bounces. I talking to a few other people, I understand they're just connection pools uh, to the database because there's limitations on the number of connections Postgres mm -hmm. can uh, handle. So PG Bounce handles that. And, and so we have we have two sets from what I can what I can see in the architecture, the reference architectures. Uh, one one set that sits in with the database node and one that sits outside. Um, so is there, uh, so I guess the question there is, uh, are there any implications for geo uh, from these PG bounces or in, when it comes to replication, doesn't matter to geo. So in, in terms of, you know, when, when we try to replicate the database, is there a flow that, that, that we need to, to consider? Are there multiple flows or do they always hit the standalone PG bouncer and then make that, uh, Make make the so that does the replication go through the PG bounces? Sorry, I'm I'm waffling here, but does the replication involve the PG bounces themselves, or do they bypass them? Yeah. So the key point here is that the PG bouncer, the replication doesn't go through the PG bouncer. Mm -hmm. For example, if you point the Patroni standby cluster on the second website to the PG bouncer on the primary, the replication will not happen. Uh, I think that's a limitation of the PG bouncer. Uh, but I believe that your main question here is, is how do we know where to connect? Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's what I put here there. So basically, uh, our application servers and Sidekick, every node that we have in our dual site or secondary or primary, doesn't matter, in a much node architecture. They connect to the PG bouncer. Okay. Uh, yeah. And PG bouncer connects to the leader node. For example, if the uh, Patroni one node one is the leader, uh, PG bouncer will connect to that node. Okay. But yeah, but we also have a console agent running on the PG bouncer node, and the, yeah. The, yeah, and the console watch has the console agent has a watcher mm -hmm. that is looking, uh, keep an eye on the Patroni cluster configuration inside the console mm -hmm. database. And as soon as they note that, okay, the, the new leader is the Patroni Replica 2. Okay. So they change this configuration and point Pidge Bouncer to the Patroni Replica 2 and restart the Pidge Bouncer. So all the applications starting talking to Patroni help you to the I see, I see. And uh, okay, so but so that's that's for normal access, or is this for secondary site trying to replicate? They, that that's you mentioned that the replication itself doesn't go through the PG bouncy yeah. directly. Directly this is the, the database. Yeah, this is the, the regular uh, regular way that regular way to connect to the database. On the primary, on the secondary, doesn't matter. Uh, the replication happens a little bit different here. For example, uh, what I use that is, is, the, is the, our second question here. Uh, yeah. For the replications, we basically use the database nodes and the TCP internal load balancer on the primary. We don't use the pitch balancer. In the secondary, we use only the database nodes. Why we need, in primary, we need both database nodes and the TCP internal load balancer. It's just to avoid us to have to repoint the secondary pattern cluster to the new leader on the primary. So, so the, the TC, is it the TCP load balancer that load, manages yeah. that? 
Oh. Yeah, we use it as, you, you, we use it as a single entry point for connecting the Patron standby, standby cluster. So, gotcha. yeah, it, it's important to note that we don't ship any the load balancer in Omnibus, but we, have, we suggest our users to use AJ Prox, but they can use any other load balancer they want. I see, I see. So, yeah. so Omnibus doesn't contain this load balancer. Yeah. If yeah. you do, don't deploy a load balancer, then if the primary uh, database node on the primary site changes, then the secondary site will not know about it and it needs to be updated yeah. to, to point to it. So the load balancer will take care of that. Yeah. Okay, uh, that, that uh, answers that, uh, that question. Great. So yeah, so basically, how the replication works that uh, you have the Pat20 cluster on the primary, and you have the second Pat20 cluster. You have a Pat20 cluster on the second side that you call mm -hmm. the Pat20 standby cluster. Yeah. And uh, the main leader, the leader on the second, replicates from the primary. We use a standby cluster on the second. And the all the replicas gotcha. uh, and, yeah. and the replicas in the second Pat20 cluster replicates from the leader on the secondary pattern cluster. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Right. Right. That does make very much, uh, very much make sense. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. it's only the leader talking to the leader. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so that kind of leads nicely into uh, replication slots as well, um, I guess. Mm -hmm. So, so, you know, how, how do the replication slots work uh, with, with when it comes to Postgres? Uh, is it just the one replication slot because it's one leader talking to another leader per site, or do all the nodes need need a separate slot when 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 it's configured? Yeah, so, so you have that question. I have the single instance database replication mm -hmm. where you have only one Postgres running on the our dual second site. So we have we need one application slot on the primary for each secondary node that you have at second of site, sorry. Yeah, for example, in, in this case, if it's the secondary site and secondary node, pretty much are the same thing. It's, it's just yeah. one node on, on site. Okay, yeah. So, so okay. if you have the our primary in US and a secondary in UK and other in Netherlands, mm -hmm. the primary need to have two application slots. That's one for Netherlands, one for UK. Gotcha, okay. Yeah, but in a multi node that base replication, uh, this changed a little bit on the primary. We need one permanent application slot per second of site, mm -hmm. but we need the max application slot to be the, this, the double of the amount of Patoni has ever slots. In this case, that the minimum that we recommend is three plus one for Jew. So for example, this one for Jill is the permanent application slot. And the other three, because the, the patroni need to replicate between them. Uh, and then yes. they need to use the application slot as well. So will you recommend double uh, the number of patroni reserves? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's say you have, you have a, a primary site with two, uh, one leader, two helpers. So each of those helpers needs two replication slots just for the primary site. And then when you bring in the secondary site, you want to double that, uh, double that the number of slots. Um, you need to configure each slot separately, right? So what point to do the helpers also point directly to the primary um, and consumer prior? Uh, let me rephrase that. Do the mm -hmm. helpers in the on the set in the secondary site need a, a replication slot on the primary lead? Mm -hmm. So you have three three uh, three nodes on the on the secondary, or you need three slots on the primary because no, uh, no. no. If you have three nodes on the second, three database nodes on the second, mm -hmm. you, you need only one physical database replication slot. On the prime, okay, and all of uh, all of them will point to this application slot, but only the leader will replicate from this slot. 
the other replicas will replicate between them mm -hmm. and they only start replicating from the primary if they become a new a leader i see right yeah. gotcha okay but they yes. still just need to talk to the the primary site leader so they they just have the same one yes. replicated across mm -hmm. so why uh, so why the maximum replication slots need to be double the number of nodes yeah because we have a, a patrony cluster in the primary yes so they need to have these lots that there is lots to replicate between them on the primary as well Okay, so but the leader would need. Oh, okay, yeah, the double. Okay, yeah. It's it's a double that that can be throwing me a little bit. Why we need to double that? Yeah. Um, we we can I come back. Uh, yeah. We can come back. So, but but they definitely need. Um, so there's, they need to replicate amongst themselves, and they need, one slot for uh, the geo secondary. Okay, understood. Okay. Um, and then you've got a Petroni standby cluster, which is on the secondary side. Uh, maximum replication slots is five, a minimum of three for one replica plus two for each additional replica. Okay, I'm not sure I followed that one. Here? The... Yeah, for the standby cluster. So minimum of three for one replica plus. Yeah, I believe that uh, if I'm not wrong, I know that uh, I think that I know the, the question here, but I can double check Gabriel that he wrote this recommendation. Okay. But I believe that we need this three for one replica because when you bootstrap the a node, uh, Application, oh, sorry, when I bootstrap a replica, patron replica, they use its own uh, application slots to, to get. Oh, the, okay. The yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. I think that's the answer, but I'll double check and. Okay. Yeah, if you wouldn't mind, that'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Dad. Okay. So now I've understand the, the, the replication there. And I think you've kind of really laid that out for me um, on, on how that kind of, uh, kind of uh, works uh, for there. So what else have I got? Um, does each DB instance in a secondary site need a replication? So we've answered all of that. We've, this upper limit, unlikely we'll hit this upper limit of number of replication slots. So that's all. That's all good. Um, could we talk a little bit about the tracking DB and how that works um, in relation to, to this? And does the tracking DB have, um, an HA architecture? Um, uh, so if the tracking DB on the secondary side were to go down, does, is there resilience built in or is there only ever one tracking DB for Geo? Yeah, we have instructions to set up the tracking database uh, in a single node or in an AJ mm -hmm. uh, architecture. So they use the follow. It's the same structure that you have for the main database, mm -hmm. but we, it will point to the tracking database. It's like that, for example, that on primary, you have the Pratoni cluster. Yes. And on the second level, we have the patron standby cluster. Yes. When when it decides to set up an AJ environment for the tracking database, basically what we do that we create a new patron cluster, a regular patron cluster here that points to the tracking database. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, so on, on the secondary side. Yeah, on the secondary side. The, the secondary. tracking database on runs on the second side. Yeah. So so you have you have the two patroni clusters, the, the main one for the GitLab database, and then the standby one, and then we created a third one for the tracking database. Yes, we have the main one on the primary, and we have the, the standby on the second that's replicating from the main one from the primary. Yeah. And you set up a new one for a new pattern cluster for the tracking database on the second gotcha. side. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. 
That's cool. Okay, that answers that question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, what else have I got here? Um, yeah, I think they have some questions about the RDS. Yeah. So, so they, they, I've I've read about um, you know um, being able to use RDS, um, and I'm, that, I, I guess that's an external database mm -hmm. uh, um, system. Why would a customer do that? I guess, for, from my understanding, why would they choose to do that? Um, and I'm sure there's there's valid reasons uh, that I'm not aware of. Uh, would be good to good to get your good to get your view on that. Why why do we choose an RDS over uh, deploying Omnibus? I think that there is two ways that you can deploy an external database: is choose these cloud services like RDS and. Mm -hmm. Google also offers one database. Yeah, probably uh, why customers decide to use RDS instead of Omnibus. Oh, sorry, the, the other way to set up a certain database is to set up a Postgres node using our Omnibus package. Mm -hmm. but it's just on a separate server. Right. Yeah. Um, but why customers use RDS instead of Omnibus? I really don't know. They need, they have some compliances. They need, they, Trust more on the RDS infrastructure for replication. Yeah, it's really hard to know why they choose a, well, a lot of trade offs to consider. Gotcha. So, from, from, from a functionality perspective, there is no difference when it, when it relates to uh, GitLab, right? So, running GitLab on, on Postgres or that, there's no uh, difference. How does that do you selecting RDS? How does that? It, 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 you know, impact replication uh, for a secondary site. I don't have a lot of knowledge on the RDS, but on the GitLab side, I believe that it works the same way. Okay, gotcha. So, but but when it comes to secondary sites, how does RDS work? Because Postgres, we understand like if there's a replication process we've just talked about, but if they choose to use RDS for their database. Is the is is the replication is the resilience built in by the the, the provider, um, or how, how what what would be the the architecture? Yeah, yeah. If they if they decide to use RDS on their primary side, they need to use RDS on their secondary side, mm -hmm. and they rely on the RDS application. Right, right. So GitLab won't won't manage that. Wonder, yeah. Gotcha, and and so uh, so replication and all of that configuration is not is not necessary. But when it comes to promoting that secondary site, so there's a couple of things I'd like to kind of dig into. When it comes to promoting, how would that work? And second, when it comes to um, the tracking database, is that going to be on RDS? Is there an option to have it on RDS or will it always be a Postgres one? Uh, no, they can set up the tracking database on RDS as well. This as well, okay. Uh, yeah, about the promotion that, yeah, we can't handle the promotion on RDS because they need to, we can't interact with RDS service to promote the database, same for the other cloud providers. So yeah, they require a manual step there to, or they can automate the promotions. But uh, yeah, but <laughs> on GitLab, we, we only automate the promotion if you are running on fully on Omnibus. Oh, I see, I see. Okay, cool. I think that probably is the gap in my knowledge. I haven't read the documentation related to external databases. So uh, that's that's a action for me to go go dig into that one. OK, um, I think we've covered everything. Thanks, uh, Douglas. Uh, I hope that I could make it a little bit more clear for you. <laughs> oh, no, this is this is this is perfect. I think what what I'm really one of the key things I was missing was the the signaling um, and, and the, the I guess the data flow 
when it comes to replication from through the different nodes uh, within a multi-node architecture. It might be a nice idea to for us to put together a, a diagram uh, of how replication would work. So, you know, uh, the leader in the standby cluster talks to the uh, the TCP uh, load balancer and the TCP load balancer talks to uh, the leader in the primary. That kind of um, diagram or a flow 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 uh, signal flow uh, data flow rather uh, would be mm -hmm. I think beneficial because it can immediately grasp that. But um, you've you've explained how that all works, so that's that's great. Um, so I appreciate that. I, I don't have any any more uh, questions. I think you've answered everything I had at least around. Uh, streaming and replication. Sounds good. And if you don't mind, I think that it would be great if you could fill in up an issue so you can create those diagrams and also could the documentation of okay, easier I for our customers and how the application works. Yeah, I will certainly do that. I think uh, there's a few other conversations we've had. Um, I've had a conversation with uh, Catalin as well on the proxy, uh, where it would be beneficial to have a uh, similar diagram. So uh, I will open a couple of issues to get those moving. It, anything else you, you can think of that would be useful to cover that we haven't? Uh, maybe I haven't even, I haven't touched on or um, added to the list here. No. If you at least makes easier to now to understand next oh. to the database, I think that's the, the main goal of the. <laughs> sorry, Douglas, you were breaking up there. I, I didn't. Catch oh, sorry. You. If you can just roll back ten seconds, that would be great. If you are able to understand, you have a how the application works. The leader on parameters. I think that this is the two main goals of this call. So I think that we are covered here. We've covered everything. Okay, awesome. <laughs> All right. Um, in that case, Douglas, I think we can uh, wrap up. Uh, really appreciate your time and uh, all the effort you've gone to to um, you know dig up uh, dig up some of the answers here. Thank you, Sampai. I'll stop the recording. <laughs>